Welcome to the No Unfinished Business Podcast. There are a thousand different ways your clients can leave unfinished business, but no single advisor can address every issue. In every episode, we'll answer the important questions to help professional advisors focused on individual clients, attorneys, CPAs, and financial advisors, identify and eliminate those planning blind spots so you can speak competently and confidently to your clients and help them leave no unfinished business. Wallace, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So Wallace, I had you on because life insurance of all shapes is part of planning for folks. And one of the things that's come up more and more in the last few years is this long-term care policy. And a lot of people have some very general ideas about what it does and what it can be used for. And rather than have me just do my research, I figured I'd bring you on because you know far more about it than I do. So where do we even start with something like this? Yeah, and thank you for having me on. And I would say that with long-term care insurance, there are actually many different types of insurance that fall under that umbrella of when you're planning for a future potential need for long-term care, how could you approach it with an insurance strategy? And so the first place that it's often good to start is thinking about what are the goals that the client has? And are they looking to preserve their estate and build a legacy? Are they looking to reduce potential conflict between adult children or other loved ones? If in the future they have meaningful needs for care and the large associated expenses that come with that. So you want to start with the client goals and then you can line that up with the different types of policies that are available in the market. And one of the things that we publish on our website is a checklist of seven questions that you must answer about your long-term care policy to really feel like you understand it. Because at a but forward, one of the things we're really focused on is that clients need to know what they own. And with long-term care, that's not always so easy because sometimes a policy is a traditional long-term care policy that only pays if there's a long-term care need. And other times it's actually a life insurance policy that you could draw early if your client needs long-term care. And then in between, there's a whole group of policies that are a little bit newer. They really came about in response to some of the challenges that traditional long-term care had historically that are called hybrid policies, where it tries to be a blend of the two. And the benefit is really weighted towards long-term care, but there also is a death benefit as well. And so one of the things that we do is help clients identify what goals are most important to them. And when you're talking with people about their goals, that can be a really important process in narrowing in on what subset makes the most sense for them to consider. Yeah. And when you say you had the traditional policy that's only going to pay out if you need it, what I'm hearing or the connection I'm making, please connect me, a traditional Mm -hmm. policy only pays if you need it, but there's no life insurance component to it. So there's no death benefit. And then I guess the next step was that you had said the draw early for long-term care. The way I kind of fit that in is, well, this was, it was a life insurance policy, a whole life policy where you could just effectively take a loan against cash value or some kind of some modification of a traditional life insurance policy that said you can pay out for this. Is that at least along the right ways of thinking about that? Those Absolutely for the traditional policy. And then in terms of the strategy where somebody's using a life insurance policy, you mentioned one way to approach a potential long-term care need, but there's actually an additional way, which is having a long-term care rider. So in the scenario that you described where it's taking a loan against the policy's value, that's absolutely available, but that's something that a a client could do really anytime. There's no long-term care need that triggers it. And then that loan comes with other considerations, such as interest accruing on that loan. With a permanent life insurance policy, and permanent is a whole category that includes whole life insurance, as long as other types of life insurance that last an entire life, such as universal life. But with a permanent life insurance policy that has a long-term care rider, it's giving the insured person a contractual right to draw up a stated percentage of their death benefit early if they have a need for long-term care. And that need for long-term care in private policies is typically triggered in a pretty similar way across different policies in the industry, which is the person's not able to do two or more 
of the six activities of daily living without substantial assistance, or that person has a memory care issue that makes it unsafe for them to not have substantial supervision. Okay. And so you can actually add on a feature on a permanent life insurance policy to draw down the death benefit. And so the money is just yours free and clear. There's no interest and I need to pay it back. Got it. Okay. So those are the two ends of it. Now you'd mentioned hybrid and mm -hmm. this is where we're definitely well beyond what I've known about uh, long-term care. So what are we thinking about with hybrid? What makes that different than the traditional long-term care than the writer on a permanent policy? Obviously, there's some blending of the two. Yeah, absolutely. So hybrid policies are absolutely a blending of the two. It refers to the fact that it is a mix of life and long-term care. And what can be interesting about the hybrid policies is that they can be a very attractively priced product for somebody who really wants to focus on ensuring the risk that they have a meaningful need for long-term care in the future. Many of our clients who are interested in long-term care strategies have had a personal experience, whether it's watching a parent or even a memory of watching a grandparent, have a meaningful struggle later in life. And the reality is that that is a very likely outcome. You know, we all hope that we're going to live the dream and live 90 or 100 years healthy and fit and then peacefully pass one day and you know, have a legacy that we leave behind. But the reality is that 70% of us who are lucky enough to live to see age 65 will need some form of long-term care in our later years. And so the hybrid policy can be great where somebody is really focused on that need to, to address the financial risk of long-term care and also the family relations risk of long-term care. But they're not really looking to lay out the capital that you would for a very large life insurance policy. Typically, the life insurance benefits on those hybrid policies are priced so that you roughly get your money back or get like a modest return if you live the dream and never need long-term care in your life. But then the internal rate of return on your money that you would get if you have a long-term care need is much higher than what you would reasonably expect to earn um, through most investments. And so that's where it can be an attractive portion of your planning and your portfolio. Okay. So it sounds like most clients that, you know, listeners would be talking to are looking for something that falls in the hybrid. Of course, the traditional and the writer on the permanent policy are still there, but most people are probably thinking about something that falls in a hybrid is what I'm getting from this. Yeah, it, it, that could well be. It is a really nicely structured product for a lot of long-term care planning needs. But as part of our process, you know, we always work with clients to look at these options. And even if they have an inclination to one from the get-go, we'll also run the analysis on the full range of options just to really make sure that, yes, the, the chosen tool is the best way to address the goal. Because um, sometimes it does vary, particularly if somebody has some more complexities to their health profile. With some clients, we find that a carrier that's offering one type of product is just much more receptive to them than the carriers offering different types of products. And so it is an individual analysis and we turn over every rock looking for the best option to make sure that we really end up with the right solution for the client's goal. So you mentioned before, what are the, you've got these seven questions and we'll make sure and have a link to that in the show notes, but you know, I guess, it, well, why don't we just walk through those seven questions now? What, what should a yeah. potential purchaser and their advisor be con considering when they're looking at these policies? Yeah, sure thing. I'll dive into the list. And this came out of, in large part, our conversations with folks who had received illustrations elsewhere, had bought policies in the past and ended up being confused or surprised or disappointed about how their policy was actually working or they just didn't understand the illustration. And so this is not everything you need to know about your policy, but it's a really good start to making sure that you're kind of headed in the right direction. And the first question is exactly what we were just talking about. It's what type of long-term care policy is this? And is it traditional? Is it hybrid? Is it life insurance with an LTC rider? And then another thing you want to think about is what is the initial maximum monthly benefit? And that's just the amount that would be paid out if you were receiving the full benefit when you need long-term care. But then a really important follow-on question is, does the maximum monthly benefit increase over time? Does it have an inflation adjustment? And for a lot of folks buying long-term care policies, the odds are really good that 
they are not going to draw this benefit for at least a while. For our clients who are looking at this in their 40s, the odds are great that they will spend several decades before they actually need these benefits. And so it's really important to understand not just what you're buying today, but what you would have in the future. And the difference between a policy without an inflation adjustment and a policy that grows at 3% compound each year is huge when you play that forward by several decades. And another thing that you really want to look out for, and I highlight this because we have seen folks who did not understand the policies they previously got work like this. You really want to make sure you understand how long does that adjust inflation adjustment last for? You really want to ideally focus on getting a lifetime adjustment because then it just grows with you as, as long as you're alive and, and kicking. And that really aligns more with what your client's likely needs are going to be. But sometimes policies only inflation adjust for 10 years or 20 years. And this then they revert can, back. Then they just stay steady. Okay. So you don't get a cliff okay. where it falls down. But if say like for a client, we have a number of clients who consider this in their 40s and 50s. If you go into it with a 10-year inflation adjustment when you're 52, but you're a pretty healthy non-smoker and you live a typical lifespan, then you're going to have at least a decade, oftentimes more, where you're just not getting an inflation adjustment on your coverage. And you know, sometimes that's the right answer for a client, but usually when we've seen those illustrations, the person who had received the illustration didn't even know. And so it's, it can sometimes, I think, be a way for premiums to look lower without the client really understanding that they might be getting. And, and just think about when we were caring for my father towards the last few years of his life, while we didn't have a long-term care policy per se for him, thinking about his expenses, I'm not sure there was ever a month where it they decreased, or if they did, it may have been a fraction of a percent. It was kind of a never ending yes. ratcheting up. And so thinking about, well, making sure those amounts are going to adjust, even if they're not scaled to whatever your the situation may require. Absolutely. And what you observed is absolutely the more typical experience where usually when a need starts, it gets bigger over time. And that is somewhat related to some of the other things we recommend people understand about their policy, which is how long can the benefit last if I'm taking out the max? Because the other piece is not just what are you laying out each month, but how long is this going to go on for? Mm -hmm. And you know, a number of people end up with meaningful long-term long -term care needs. Uh, for women, it's about... 20% who end up needing care for five or more years. And then for men, it's about 10% who have those very long, long-term care needs. And so knowing if a policy is really going to cover you in that scenario, or another approach can just be to focus on the kind of typical experience, which is more like a year and a half for men, two and a half years for women, and then look to other financial resources, the long potential risk of a longer need. So there are different ways that you can set a client's financial situation to address the risk of different long-term care needs. And a big part of our work is helping people think about what they would look to in these different scenarios. Another key thing to consider when looking at these policies is whether it's reimbursement or indemnity. And the reason why that is so important to understand is that it affects how much money can be paid out to you once you're actually on claim. A reimbursement policy works much more like if you ever submitted a corporate expense report where you have to show that you had qualified expenses. Whereas an indemnity policy takes the approach of, like once the insured person proves that they need long-term care, which is oftentimes a fairly straightforward process where it's just a qualified medical provider certifying that there's the need, then the full benefit gets released to you and it is entirely your business how you choose to spend it. And so there's different levels of flexibility and administrative needs that come into play and in thinking about how you want your coverage set up. Excellent. So Wallace, how many questions have we run through of your top seven? Oh, so those are the top five and okay. then uh, okay. did only two more. Okay. So just to make sure, question one was what type of policy? Mm -hmm. Question two, uh, mm -hmm. what's the, that maximum benefit then is that maximum benefit subject to an inflation adjustment? Number four was how long is it going to be adjusted if adjusted? Number five was reimbursement or indemnity, which leaves us with number six and number seven. Exactly right. 
And so number six is, can my premiums increase in the future? And this is a really important one to know because typically when people get long-term care policies, it's going to be a long-term financial commitment to that policy. And some policies are structured where they're fully guaranteed. And the illustration that you see on day one is absolutely what you're going to get so long as that carrier remains in business. And then you choose a financially strong carrier to be confident that they will stand ready to make good on their end of the contract. And other policies are structured where the carrier does retain a contractual right to raise premiums. And in fact, a lot of people come to us with recollections of their parents or grandparents experiencing absolutely massive price increases because historically what happened is back in the 90s and early 2000s, especially a number of carriers wildly mispriced a lot of long-term care. And so they had to raise the premiums a lot, like 50%, 80% on a population that's oftentimes retired folks. So those premiums on policies that aren't fully guaranteed that can go up in the future, they're not necessarily a bad choice, but when you're thinking about your options, you want to make sure that you understand what you're going into. And if you're picking a policy that has not fully guaranteed premiums, you want to make sure that it's a financially strong carrier where you feel confident about their ability to make good on what you expect from them. And then the last question is just, if, and this only applies if the policy has a death benefit, but you want to ask, until what age is the death benefit guaranteed? And my favorite answer is you know, 120, 121, because that is really much, much stronger than some of the options in the market. I cannot tell you the number of times that people come to us with illustrations of policies where they do not understand that the whole policy could be worth zero sometime in their 70s or 80s even if their insurance company is still in business, even if they've paid the premiums that were shown to them in the illustration. And it's one of those things where the odds of that playing out are low, but the outcome is so severe that I really wouldn't want to see anyone get into a policy without a clear understanding of what the downside case guarantees are. And we certainly helped a number of folks who had illustrations with hidden risks they didn't know about, understand what they were looking at, and then make a choice that really felt informed and comfortable for them. Excellent. So as we look to wrap up this little conversation, when should people start thinking about long-term care? You'd mentioned somebody in their 40s, but is that, I guess, normal person, and then you can put the, when should they start thinking about it? And then if there are other adjustments on that, Talk about that after that. Yeah, absolutely. So a common time that's often a great time to think about long-term care insurance is in the 50s and even into the 60s. There are technically options still available in the 70s, but they start to get very expensive and it's also hard to qualify. Like a key thing to keep in mind with long-term care insurance is that if you have some familiarity with life insurance pricing and you're aware of how many different shades of gray there are in life insurance pricing, Long-term care is generally a different ball game when you're talking about traditional or hybrid policies. It's a more binary underwriting process where you're either insurable or you're not. And there are a few gradations, but not as many. And so the result of that is that there's more risk that if you wait, you might find that something comes up that results in not just having to pay a bit more, but not having options. And so that's just something to keep in mind. And that said, we're also really big on the fact that any insurance policy needs to make sense as part of someone's broader financial picture. And we certainly have a number of clients who are off professionals in their 40s, but maybe they have two or three kids in private school and they're living in a high cost of living area and looking at long-term care in their 40s, like they're interested, they have recollections of watching grandparents, maybe a parent is now struggling with their own health, they want to do it but it doesn't necessarily make sense yet. And so I think that it is important to consider the options as soon as you're thinking about it, but we also wanna make sure that the, the policy makes sense as a priority for the client where they're at in life now. And if not, we'll be honest with them about that assessment. I think that's something that we do really well and differently. But another interesting thing I'll highlight 
and it's driving a massive uptick in long-term care among people in their 30s and 40s is state mandates. Um, oh, Washington's really? yeah, state, Washington state already passed legislation that they were going to impose a payroll tax of 0.58% on W-2 earnings, uncapped, to fund a long-term care state program that would pay out a maximum benefit of $100 a day for one year. And so that was an unattractive proposition for a lot of folks, especially higher earners, because you had this uncapped payroll tax alongside a 36,500 starting benefit. And it would be in indexed to inflation, but obviously that still doesn't make sense for a lot of higher earning folks. But they did offer an opt-out provision. And so we were very active in Washington state, helping clients get private policies. And this is fully compliant with the law. They intended for people to make a choice about either get private coverage or participate in the public program. And we helped a lot of clients who were probably a couple decades before they would have otherwise thought about it, get covered. Um, and a number of other states are considering similar actions. Uh, New York and Pennsylvania, for example, both have draft legislation out. California has a task force that's recently put out some of their ideas. And it seems like there's a lot of momentum in California towards doing something along the lines of a public long-term care option in the future. And so it's definitely a real need that most of us are going to have. You know, if we're just honest about the facts, most of us that are lucky to survive to old age will need long-term care. And the only question is, how do we plan for it? How do we pay for it? And definitely insurance as one component of that strategy is something worth looking at. Great. Well, Wallace, for our listeners who want to get in touch with you, learn more about long-term care insurance, where can they find you? Yeah, so folks are welcome to come visit us at aboveboardfinancial.com. You are welcome to get in touch with us to contact us or fill out our online questionnaire, and then we can really get to work looking at your options and helping you understand what's available in the market. We really want our clients to know what they own and make a decision that's informed and really right for them. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for stopping by today. You're very welcome. Thanks so much for having me. It's been great. Thanks so much for listening. You can find more episodes, videos, and links to more helpful content at nounfinishedbusiness.com. If you have any questions, feedback, or ideas for topics, please reach out via social media or email john at john at strohmeyerlaw.com. And of course, if you or your clients need help from John with an estate planning, probate, trust, or cross-border tax issue, you can book time directly with John at askjohnaquestion.com. 